Oh, I just annoy the shit out of everybody. Like, uh, any parent that has a kid that uh, is taking up an mi- instrument and they're into metal or something like that, you know, you, you guys, hats off to you. You're great parents. You're very, very tolerant. Uh, but a little tip, just buy earplugs, man. Just buy earplugs. Yeah, walk around the house with the earplugs on it. It'll, sa- it'll save you so much stress. <laughs> I can't imagine what it was like to hear uh, Tommy Emmanuel the guy that uh, does classical gas there. Uh, he, I think he, he summed it up. He goes, never let anybody, because musicians learn through repetition, just doing the same thing over and over to, to the point, like when you hear a guitar player play something really good, you know he played it till the point he's sick of playing it. You know what I mean? Just that over and over again. He goes, never let anybody hear you practice because uh, they'll suicide you. you like they, they'll, you know, like they're just, they're, they'll murder you because you're going to annoy them so much. Uh, but that's what it takes to get good at stuff, right? So for me, I obviously went more down the, the, the guitar path. And it's only like, this is my first drum kit. And I've only had it for uh, uh, five months now. And, you know, like I don't, I'm probably not going to mass a lot of drum kits just because A, it takes up a whole room. B, and this is not a huge, huge kit. You know what I mean? Like a double bass in here would take up the whole room. You know what I mean? Um so I just went right for gold with the, the drum kit, you know, because I know it's something I'm going to stick with, et cetera, et cetera. So I just went for a pro or intermediate pro drum kit right away. Uh, it's a drum kit of a lifetime and it's beautiful. And everything. I, said, I thought you were talking about guitars. Well, I am because the philosophy here is going to be kind of what the video is about and kind of what that other gentleman was getting at is I bought this knowing that I'm going to learn on it. I'm going to grow on it. Uh, it's going to be in a recording studio from time to time. Whenever I get the budget to do that, I'm going to probably have more professional drummers playing this thing in the studio for me. Who knows, maybe even if I if I get a drummer and his drum kit's not as good as mine and we're getting a big high-paying gig, I'll let him use this just for the aesthetic because look at the thing, it's gorgeous, right? I like to get a guitar in that kind of green in color, that you know, big swamp ash guitar would look really cool in that anaconda burst uh, green. Um, and it's a nice aesthetic prop for the guitars too, right? <laughs> but the point is, is that I didn't buy a cheap drum kit and then an intermediate drum kit and then another, you know... And then suddenly, you know, you're, you're 20,000 bucks of drum kits. You know what I mean? Uh, you'd say, wow, that's a lot. I don't have that kind of money for a drum kit. Uh, neither do I. But you get the idea. You buy first cheap uh, drum kit, the second cheap drum kit, the third cheap drum kit. And finally, oh, I got to buy the really good one. Where if you would have just kind of jumped right to the, from a cheap one right to a really good one, you would have saved a lot of money and you would have been able to buy a really, really good one. Now let's get back to guitars. That's what happened with the guitars. Okay, so my dream guitar, pretty much from the time it came out, was the SG61 reissue. And I bought this in 2009. It was two years old when I bought it. I didn't realize it had an issue with the, uh, which was common. The reason why they don't make these anymore is to find one without a, a slight bow in the neck, not a warp, but a bow in the neck at the heel joint is very uncommon. Uh, these guitars, they, they're not thick enough to, to, to support the necks on them, right? The tendon isn't long enough, it's not thick enough. So the neck tends to bow right around here. Still playable, but you can't get that ultra low fine action like you can on the standard deck, right? And, but I still wanted the guitar. So 1900 bucks at the time was too much. And when they came out, I was just, you know, I ended up going with an Ibanez RG750 uh, whiz bang guitar, which suited my needs, even though that, uh, I was going to buy a 62 reissue, but I ended up buying the RG750 and that guitar got stolen. Yes, I bitch about it every time I talk about it. Um, and then eventually I bought the Hammer Diablo, which I still could have either gotten one of these uh, or the 62 reissue, but I, I, I ended up, because I was playing more modern music and stuff like that, I did realize by that time that I was better off with a guitar with a Floyd Rose and, and stuff like that. And I've recently gotten the privilege to uh, see video a video of uh, one of my old band syndicate from a, our first video, uh, our first show together in 1995 playing that Hammer Diablo guitar and my Epiphone Les Paul at the very, very tail end. And it was really cool to hear that rig and the same mess of boogie cab still on the stage all those years, all these years later. Uh, 
And the thing is, is that, well, the, the, the Masabuki cab is a perfect example. I bought that in 1991. And instead of buying 20 different amplifiers, I, that's been my go-to stage blaster. <laughs> you know, like it, it, that thing can get pretty loud if you got the power behind it. It's three 360 watt cab, right? And it allows me to hear every little nuance of the, each one of these guitars pretty well. And I realized when I was buying the cheaper guitars, okay, uh, just before I bought this, I bought an Ibanez Art Core uh, 75 as a jazz box, right? Just to get something different. Cool guitar, but the pickups uh, were really, it was a recording guitar only. It, it just, it was, the pickups were so low output, like live, they you couldn't, you couldn't really get anything out of them. But boy, did they ever record nice. Um, I bought an, a G400. I bought, well, I bought the G400. At, that was my first SG. It was an Epiphone G400. for That and that little uh, trainer amp that I have sitting over there in the far side, 15-watt amp. I bought that in 2003. I think both guitar and amp was like uh, 300 bucks or something like that. A brand new guitar, brand new. And I bought it. I bought the G400 as an SG because I like the SG shape and I was never able to, I didn't have the money for the, the, the expensive ones. So what I did is I, I bought that and I, with the idea of using it as a jam that guitar. Well, then after I bought the art core, the jazz box, uh, and then I bought, uh, the Epiphone double neck G EDS or G1270, uh, sorry, EDS 1270, no G1275. <laughs> yeah. The EDS 1275 is the Gibson, which, uh, I remember playing one of those the first time I played uh, the 61 reissue. And in, in the in the in the Lozon music when they had one. And it was cool. That, like it was a really, really cool guitar. It was a really cool I, I was actually surprised how light it was for such a big guitar. Now the the G1275 was a boat anchor. It was 17 pounds or something like 14 to 17 pounds. It kept strep, uh, stretching the, the guitar straps. But it had that cool 12 string on it. But that was like a twelve hundred dollar guitar, so it was a pro guitar. It sound it had really good pickups in it, everything like that. There, you know, uh, it was a really good guitar. And whatever, and I only played it on stage once or twice. And uh, if you ever buy a double neck, buy sunglasses because you're going to see a lot of camera flashes. It doesn't matter if you're popular or not. It's just, oh, there's a double neck. You know those guitars are like two guitars. Yeah, everybody just because it's so unique to see, right? Um. And then suddenly I was sitting there looking at a bunch of guitars on my bed or on my couch at the time in the apartment I was living in. And I'm like, hey, I could have just bought one of these, right? And then I went on the hunt for the best SG. So I started flogging all my other guitars and I ended up buying this. And the only two electric guitars I had for many years was my Epiphone G400 and then uh, this. And then eventually in 2000, from 2006 to 2009, uh, I bought that in 2009. So I now bought my dream guitar, the guitar that I put as a benchmark to judge all other guitars by. And the thing I learned is that you, you can't really compare an apple to an orange or a refrigerator, right? Like it's, they're different animals. So my Mark Holcomb guitar, oh, sound like thunder. Uh, my Mark Holcomb guitar, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, it is really a different animal in comparison to the SG. The scale lengths are different. Uh, they, they're just not the same. You know what I mean? They're just not the same. So you buy your dream guitar and now you're under the impression that, okay, problem solved. You, you, you've got everything you want. So you'll never want another guitar again. And But that's not how it works, right? Uh, now, mind you, I had these two guitars and it's like, okay, but they're really just flavors of the same thing. So, again, I don't really get anything different. So I've bought the same guitar literally twice. Just they look a little different. And, you know, some slight differences. Uh, obviously, 57 plus two classic 57s, two classic 57s. So when I'm recording with these guitars, the difference in, uh, differences in the guitars, they, they're, they're, they, they, uh, they sound a little different. Ah, that's what it is. It's my snare. with that little I keep hearing my voice distorted every now and then like am i catching a cold no it's my snare still engaged um 
So the thing is, is that I bought the same guitar twice, which is fine because I love SGs. Uh, but then in 2019, I wanted to start getting into more modern metal sounds. And I'm still going to be building a rig that, you know, like my, my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. I'll, I'll probably never get rid of that amp. It definitely needs new tubes. <laughs> it's 19 years old. Uh, because the cleans on that amp are great. And cranking classic 57s through that amp, is it just sounds so good. The modern guitars, they don't sound... They're, they're, those pickups are a little too hot to be going through the Hot Rod Deluxe. Uh, it, so I need a modern sounding amp, right? So I'm going to need that. Uh, but I'm like, well, once again, I don't want to be buying 20 different amps. I want, you know, the more, more less is more for me, right? And you don't want to be buying stuff you're not going to use. So, for example, my Jackson Flying V, that's that's my heavy metal, thrash metal guitar. That guitar is crazy. The Mark Holcomb guitar, you know, like that's, a, you know, it's a metal guitar for sure. Uh, but that's my alternate tunings guitar. Like right now I have it in the Wax Wings tuning. The 8-string, well, I'm not sure what the fate of the 8-string is going to do. My uh, Holcomb 7-string is down in the basement. So I knew I wanted to go 7-string, 8-string to get more modern sound so that they wouldn't sound like this. They would sound something different. Because these things, even when you down-tune them, they don't sound like an extended range guitar. Uh, and I did comparisons between the two Mark Holcomb guitars, the 6-string and the 7-string. You know, drop C tuning versus B standard on the 7-string, right? And the B standard tuning on the 7-string is always heavier. The 8-string the would drop, you know, like... Uh, F sharp standard bass 